Perhaps you don't need to be a scientist to understand science. Welcome to Cranium vs Skull. Let's learn more about a serious issue, perhaps a scary one for many. But let's do it with coffee and cake. So are the mics on? Or yeah, the mics on. The mics are on. Are we still on? Everything? <laughs> mics? Can you put the mic on you anyhow? The, uh, is everything on? Forgot to put Paul's mic on. Sorry, Paul. Cracking your skull today will be Paul Banyolo, artist. Fresh from the mind of cranium, Dr. Mahasti Sagachian, oncologist. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us, everyone a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so uh, my name is Maesti Sagaccian. Okay. I'm a medical oncologist, which means that I treat cancer patients and I also do some research. Um, and uh, my specialty is breast cancer. How did you become a breast cancer spe specialist? I, I wanted to be a private detective when I was a, uh, <laughs> hey, a teenager. Kind of <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, you're yeah. right. Sometimes it's, yeah. you say clues and then you... Right. Um, and, uh, but uh, in my family, there are a lot of doctors. I mean, both my grandparents were doctors and I have, and I have a grandmother I had, um, I lost her, but who was Sorry. one of the first women doctors in, in Iran because yeah. I'm Iranian originally. And uh, she was really a figure in this my family. Great. So she was born probably in the 20s or something? Yeah, exactly, 23. Okay. Wow. And uh, she became a doctor during World War II. And uh, she, she was a um, gynecologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, she was a very strong and, and uh, smart and, and funny um, uh, grandma and yeah. doctor. Sort of a role model. Perhaps. Yes, exactly. So I just wanted to be like her. So, um, ah, okay. yeah. Cool. That's not a one. That's the one. The woman. The woman. The wo. Um, I'm kind of over man. So I just, it's just wo. I, I, every, everyone. <laughs> I, of course, I, I know a lot of women who have had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah. And it seems, for the most part, they have uh, full mastectomies. Yeah. Uh, it seems, generally, I don't know that you have to take off the entire breast or both of the breasts. Why can't you just take out the tumor? Well, um, it's now many years that if you can, you don't take out the entire breast. Okay. I mean, uh, more and more, uh, we try to do what we call conservative surgery, right. which means you just take out the tumor with um, a safe area of without cancer cells uh, around it, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you leave the, the breast as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you do is that you do radiation therapy on the breast, on okay. the remaining breast, uh -huh. uh, to get rid of one or two cancer cells that might still be there, uh -huh. of, or cells that could become cancer cells uh -huh. in the future. But it seems strange, like almost all of, all of them who have yeah. breast cancer, they all had mistake. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say about 10. I could probably name 10. It's probably then that um, because they were young women, or because of... Um, specific features that they had those um they had um, cancers that were spread uh all over their breast because yeah. otherwise well maybe there's also a bias um because uh you know a lot of women who've had breast cancer uh with just just uh conservative surgery they don't they don't always claim that they had, they don't talk about it. Uh -huh. And I wonder whether it's not because those who have had mastectomy, which is, you know, something more... Um, it's pretty drastic. Yeah, right? drastic uh, and whatever. traumatic. Uh -huh. And also you can see that that woman has had a reconstruction. Maybe they talk more about it. And the very, very rare cases when you remove both um, breasts. Um, this is either because there is a uh, diffuse cancer in both breasts mm -hmm. or because um, we do that on a um, preventive way, right. prophylactically, yep. uh, for patients that are at very high risk of oh. breast cancer, okay. like uh, Angelina Jolie. Except from the U.S., where this trend for doing mastectomies is very high. Yeah, um, most of the ones that I'm thinking of are American. American. That's yeah, it. so that's, that's the Angelina Jolie effect. Ooh, she's got him up against the ropes with that one. Oh, such vicious word wrestlers. Tearing each other adjective from adjective. 
synonym from synonym. Um, okay. You know the actress, yes. Angelina Jolie? Yeah, I didn't know she had breast cancer. No, she didn't. Okay. But um, by her family, she had a gene, uh, a mutation. I was going to ask you about BRCA. That. And so it's, it's a matter of, in the genes, there are certain genes? That... Yeah, it's okay. like in your genes, one of, a few of them are very important for uh, protecting you against cancer. Okay. Um, and one of those is the BRCA what genes. What does that mean? It's breast cancer, BR for breast okay. and CA for cancer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So BRCA, there are two that are known, BRCA1 and 2. Okay. When those genes are mutated, you are at very high risk of breast cancer. Um, it doesn't come out of the blue. You often have a whole family, a family history of breast or ovarian cancer. So in the United States, for instance, um, Breast, I mean, uh, BRCA screening is really widespread, and um, many women without a family history go for BRCA screening. And then, in when you do such type of white population screening, you see that there is up to five to seven point five percent of women that carry uh, this mutation. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. And then for those women, because they are at very high risk of breast cancer, uh, then you can. Um, you can um, propose to do a prophylactic mastectomy so that they don't get a breast oh, yeah. cancer. Right. Yeah, and you do reconstruction. So that's the whole story about Angelina Jolie. Um, her mother had this mutation, so she, she she has been tested for the mutation. She had she has the mutation, and she went for prophylactic uh, mastectomy, prophylactic ophorectomy, which means you removed your ovaries. Yeah. And but also what was very um, um, bold uh, from her site was that she she claimed it. I mean, she she told it just to raise awareness about this issue right. and show that you can do that and still be a wonderful, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a, a lot of uh, noise around it, um, with a little um, collateral effect was that after she declared that she had had um, bilateral mastectomy. Um, the rate of mastectomies in the U.S. went up wow. drastically. That's why you really need to explain that this surgery, this preventive surgery, is really for people with mutation because otherwise a normal woman, a woman not mutated, yeah. has like one, maximum 2% risk of breast cancer. Oh, okay. Interesting. So is it worth removing your breast because of this 1%? I don't, yeah. I don't think the so. The odds are much lower in that case. Yeah, right. yeah. Skull Cradia! Today, I don't know if we can say that, but it's 1st October. Right. So it's... Um, uh, breast Cancer Breast Cancer, month? yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, it's good we talk about it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's a <laughs> nice coincidence. <laughs> Why are these guys being so nice to each other? They're just nice people. Now, this is another thing that's sort of strange. Like, I, I was thinking if I lost a nipple or something, I'd feel a little bit odd. And I remember hearing something, this may be a false memory or a fantasy, that they, what they would do is when they remove the breasts is they keep the nipple there. Is no, that that's something? correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Nipples are so important for, for women uh, and also for men because, <clears throat> you know, there are breast cancers in... 1% of breast cancers are men. Mm. Uh, I did breast not know cancers, that. yeah. Huh. Wow. Oh, God. I also remember seeing a report, uh, uh, a, a, um, a video mm -hmm. regarding uh, tattoo. This guy yeah, had a tattoo. business of tattooing yeah. nipples on. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you, you can't always spare the nipple. Because when you leave the nipple, you leave a bit of. Um, breast gland right. behind it right. and there you can have a relapse of your cancer. Of course there are other reconstructive uh, ways of building a new nipple and this is where tattoos and you have also 3D tattoos, tattoos that give a bit of volume or sometimes some patients that don't get reconstruction they do tattoos all over yeah. um, and, and well that's beautiful too. Can chemistry really exist between two humans? Lay into him! And where are you working? I work at the American Hospital of Paris, and it's the only American hospital outside of the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so mm. this is sort of the default place for foreigners to come. If it is. Some help. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, what were you doing beforehand? I was in a cancer center in uh, Paris called Institut Gustave Roussy. Uh -huh. This is in Villejuif, and this is the biggest uh, cancer center probably in Europe. Right. And um, what happened is that uh, one of our former directors um, became director of this American hospital. Um, and so he wanted to build a new team, and also he had a, a, a project to provide high quality uh, cancer care, especially in breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So he was looking for a breast cancer expert. Right. And um, well, he, he proposed me to, to go there and, and, and launch this program. So, so um, he sort of drafted you for the team, he sort of... Uh, yeah. yeah, and, and you know, what was nice was that um, the idea was really to, uh, to build something brand new, quite innovative with a real philosophy and a, a real strategy behind. Okay. Um, so what is this philosophy and strategy? Does it differ in some way? It's about um, taking care of patient very, patients very globally. Mm -hmm. um, globally from a um, time point of view, meaning you should um, be both into prevention, screening of breast cancer, mm -hmm. as well as into um, effective treatments of breast cancer, but also then in the in the follow up of patients. And often, for instance, what happens is that in hospitals, in cancer centers, uh, all the resources are dedicated to treatment, to active treatment, mm -hmm. and not that much on prevention or screening mm. or on follow up. We really want to provide services not only dedicated to curing patients, mm -hmm. but also to taking care of patients in a more holistic way. Um, so adding to the um, core of the treatment all these um, uh, supportive uh, services that people need and people often go seek outside of hospitals and sometimes in, you know, with none, not really um, evidence-based um, ways of doing. For instance, you know, like complementary and alternative treatments. Uh -huh. Some of them are very efficient, really needed. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, some of them are might be even dangerous for yeah. people. Like, for example? For, for example, supplemental herbs. Um, for instance, uh, curcuma. Okay. Curcuma is... Um, um, it might have uh, anti-cancer properties. Mm. Um, and so uh, a lot of people now take supplements while they are on chemo or during their hormonal, hormonal treatments. But sometimes it can have also interactions with the drugs we are giving. The curcuma can cancel yeah. out the effects exactly. or have some sort of bad interaction. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there are data in the lab where you see that curcuma does have some wow. uh, active effects. But, but then the problem is that what works in the lab or on the mice is not always true um, right. in, for humans. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, I'm curious about other uh, herbs besides curcuma. Are there any other things that someone might not know about? Hey, this isn't a wedding! I mean, they're making sense to me, they're making sense to you, but is it good enough? But since they started making sense, I haven't had any sense left. The, the, a real, really reliable and good source of information is um, a site called About Herbs. Okay. Uh, this has been built by the Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center okay. in New York. Okay. And they have uh, built this website where you can find all the existing supplements, herbs, substances, molecules um, that, that people might use or want to use and then they cite all the existing evidence about how this could work mm -hmm. and why this could be dangerous or um, what are the interactions uh, in in what um, natural uh, ingredient you can find this or how it is branded etc and it goes you know from um, a garlic uh, mm -hmm. or uh, to to techniques like acupuncture like wow. uh, yeah Okay. And, and you personally, what is your day-to-day -day, uh, routine? Like when you, like uh -huh. what does your day look like? I, I mainly see about? patients. So um, I have different types of practices. So um, it can either be at the risk clinic. The risk clinic is a place where we do... Risk? Risk, okay. yeah, like okay. risk of breast cancer. Right. And um, uh, the, um, the objective of this risk clinic is to see... 
uh, people, women that don't have breast cancer and who want to have an assessment of their breast cancer risk. Um, the other type is patients coming for diagnosis. So it's women that have a lump or that have had a mammography, for instance, done and they have seen something abnormal. And, and then um, a, a third um, part of, the, of my um, um, activity is about taking care of can cancer patients. Um, and then, and so then it's got. You're talking about like testing new sorts of drugs on actual patients. Yeah, that can be one thing. So those are what we call uh, industry promoted, uh, sponsored trials. Uh -huh. And then we have the what we call the academic trials, okay. which are trials not of a drug, but of a strategy. For instance, um, when uh, you do surgery of breast cancer, usually you take out uh, lymph nodes from the axilla. Okay. And uh, axilla? axilla is uh, the area under the under okay. the arm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so there's a little node of lymph nodes. Yes. Bundle of lymph nodes right here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Take those out. Yeah. And and so one of the strategic uh, um, innovation has been to um, understand that uh, you can uh, just take one lymph node, which yeah. is called the sentinel node. Okay. Instead of taking all of the nodes that okay. are there. Do they each have names? Um, no. I mean, not like friendly names. <laughs> no. <laughs> Joe the lymph node. <laughs> Joe the lymph node. <laughs> but, but sentinel and, oh, it's a type of lymph node, perhaps. Yeah, the sentinel node actually is really like a sentinel in a, in a battle. Okay. So what happens is that you inject a product in the, in the tumor. Okay. And then that product, you, yep. you see that it goes in this sentinel node, which right. means that this sentinel node is the one um, that is at the forefront of um, defending okay. the tumor. Right. Uh, so if you just take that sentinel node and if it, it is there are no cancer cells in it, yeah. then it means that the other nodes are safe as well. Right. If you see cancer cells in that one, then you have to take the other nodes out. Okay. Because they might have cancer cells. All right. So this now, is this is before addressing the tumor, before removing the tumor. It, it's while you remove the tumor. Okay. Maybe if I just started listening and stopped commentating, I'd learn something. If we stopped commentating, we'd cease to exist. For we are the invisible commentators that parade through the mist. You have to do these other precautionary methods to make sure that all the cancer is exactly. Limited. Yeah. And what do you do hormonally? Well, it's actually we call it hormonal therapy. Uh -huh. But in fact, those treatments are anti-hormonal treatments. So do, does every patient have to take this hormonal, anti-hormonal therapy, everyone? It, it's, it's um, I would say 70% of patients uh. because 75 of breast cancers have uh, receptors for uh, hormones. Okay. And so um, breast cancer cells are really fueled by hormones. Okay, so are you blocking the hormones? Yeah, the problem is that our body as women, uh, menopausal or not, we produce hormones all the time. Okay. So you need to block the effect of the hormones on the cancer cells. Um, you know, the good thing about breast cancer is that you cure more than 80% of patients. Yeah. So that's the nice part, is that you cure all those women and you're happy with what you do. Uh, the tough part is the side effect of treatment, side effects that, that can um, last very long, and also patients who don't want treatments. That's also very tough for us to handle. Yeah. Uh, Why you know, wouldn't someone want treatment? I have a lot of them, uh, a lot of young women, you know, and some of them are in a denial of their breast cancer. Um, which I can understand because it's so unfair, so unfair when it happens at 35 years and, and nobody has cancer at 35 years. Yeah. And then so when it happens, a lot of women are in a denial. Um, and then uh, even when they accept that they have a cancer, uh, a lot of patients want, don't want chemotherapy or, um, you know, when they do surgery, they think, and I think this is um, normal, they think, well, you've removed my cancer, why do I have to do chemo or radiation therapy or hormonal therapy? Right. And that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so our job is to explain why we, we do that and, and help them accept. The real tough part is, of course, metastatic patients, patients that um, uh, have cancers, I mean, breast cancers that relapse and spread in other organs and that, 
uh, you can't cure. And um, this is, of course, um, the area where we feel um, we haven't um, succeeded in doing our job. Right. So, well, thanks for coming. My and, pleasure. Uh, talking about this all. Yeah, yeah thank you for your interest. Super yeah, nice to so meet nice. you. So. <laughs> Is that a cool wah between the skull and cranium to which these two individuals walk haphazardly? So you're gonna go in the wedding business after yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> just the cover of the yeah. <laughs> tickers. Are things heating up? They're definitely not cooling down. Maybe they're warming up. Ooh, that's an interesting theory, but have you thought about the possibility that in fact they're staying at exactly the same temperature while moving fractionally closer and closer together? We have no privacy here. <laughs> <laughs> but usually in science, that's how it is. I mean, you go for one objective, and then in the end, you find something that you didn't expect at all.